time to call the meeting to order. Uh, roll, roll call, please. Commissioner Fowler. Present. Commissioner Scrivener. Here. Commissioner Sanders. Here. Commissioner Bauer. Here. Commissioner McGibbon. Here. Commissioner Morris. Here. Commissioner McGuire. Commissioner Couch. Here. Commissioner Sullivan. Hey, um, Commissioner Fowler, would you uh, lead us in the pledge to the flag? We're on now to number three, and it's approval of the me uh, approval of the meetings of the May twenty second, nineteen ninety or two thousand and nineteen. Second. All in favor, say aye. aye. Or, I'm sorry. Cast your votes, please. Motion approved, all ayes. This is now is the portion of public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on this agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. With no public comment, we're now on to uh, notice of public hearings. City of Arvin, five-year review of, uh, and sphere of influence amendment. Mr. Knox. Let me turn on microphone, that'd be helpful. At the last commission meeting, there was a vote to approve the City of Arvin's Municipal Service Review, which was item 1737, and a separate vote to continue the Sphere of Influence Amendment and five-year review to this meeting. The issue at hand is the fire contract between the city and county. After much discussion, both confirmed that a contract is in place in full force and runs until uh, 2032. This is an acceptable plan for providing fire services. While the city and county are continuing to negotiate a new contract, it doesn't preclude that a contract and plan for services is currently in place and valid. A second condition was also recommended at the last meeting. This condition would have required a generic tax agreement. I have reconsidered that condition and no longer support adding it to the approval of this item. LAFCO does not have any regulatory authority to require a master tax agreement as requested by the county planning department. A tax agreement whether a master tax agreement or a one-off is a requirement of an annexation, not a sphere of influence amendment. We will, we will continue to encourage cities and counties to negotiate master tax agreements as they are the easiest long-term solution, but also support both cities and counties uh, to use a one-off agreement at any time that they so choose. The indemnif indemnification agreement, as with all applications, remains a condition of approval. And with that is my recommendation to adopt by resolution the sphere of influence as presented, including the notice of exemption adopted by the city of Arvin and conditions recommended by the executive officer. Oops, that's a, that's a negative dec declaration as a CEQA document. Is there any pub public comment to this issue? Does anyone on the commission have any uh, comment to this issue? Chairman? Yes. <clears throat> I think I asked for the extension last time, so I just want to say to the folks from the City of Arvin, I appreciate your patience. I'm glad that got worked out, and I'll move up the staff's recommendation. Second that. Fowler. Okay, um, please cast your votes.
It did show approved all eyes, so it may not go back to that screen. Okay. So the motion was approved. Uh, we're on to Shafter Wasco Air K Irrigation District Annexation Number Ten, Mr. Knox. Yeah, the Shafter Wasco Irrigation District, also known as SWID, had Annexation 1748 approved by this commission at the May meeting, conditioned on the results of a protest hearing. Later that week, LAFCO uh, gave proper notice for the hearing to take place on Monday the 24th. The he hearing was held at the SWIT office in Wasco. No protests were filed at the hearing. No written protests were mailed or delivered to the LAFCO office. We did have the one letter from the attorney that was presented to you at the last meeting. As such, the, the threshold for a protest was not met. The district still needs to go through the Proposition 218 process to create a new fee structure for parcels that need coverage under Sigma. Is my reckon, recommendation to accept, is to accept the results of the protest hearing. Any public comment to this issue? Commissioners, any comment? If not, uh, please cast your, or do I have a motion? I need a Move motion. Approval. Second. Do I have a, a First and a second, uh, please cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Uh, we're on to public project review. There is none. Uh, so we're on to number seven, commission items. Any commissioners have any items? I have an item like I'd, I'd like to discuss. Um, at the present, I've only been on the board three years, so I don't know what has been discussions on, on this issue before, but as far as rotating chairman, um, I, I think that the short time I've been on, uh, when we had the two of the chairmen, um, uh, Commissioner, um, Scrivener and um, Commissioner uh, Rivera is a lot smoother. So I think when you get people on here, um, and the previous chair told me it would take six months to get comfortable, well then you only have six months, <laughs> you know. So I think that um, I've been uh, I've been 23 years on my district, and we've had three presidents in this 23 years. And it's when, when one's retired because of health, the next one retired because of health, and this one will probably be there until retired because of health. And it just runs smoother. And I was talking uh, to a um, um, business manager of a water district, and he said that when they went from rotating to just voting every year for, uh, not rotating, but voting every year for a, a president, and he said it just operates much smoother because you get some crappy people in there trying to run. <laughs> so I think if I think we should have the uh, policy committee look into this and see if we want to uh, do away with the rotating and just uh, vote on uh, who we think can run the meeting the best every year. Uh, any other comments? You want to make that referral to the, do we have the policy I, I, committee? Yeah, I want to make that referral to the policy committee. Yes, the chairman appointed members at the last meeting, ah. and, and you're on it, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> do I need a motion, or I, as chairman, can I make that? Uh... I think you can. I think you just made it, yeah. so we can we can send that okay. to the policy committee. Do I have any other comments, or from anybody, on what their opinion is on it? I think you're doing a good job. <laughs> I haven't been here six months yet. So that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. I think you're doing a great job. But anyway, we're going to, the policy committee will meet on this, correct? That is correct. Uh, actually, I have, that was one of my comments in my executive officer notes. Uh, we do have a policy committee that, was, that you filled at the last meeting. Uh, 
because there was a referral made from uh, Commissioner Rivera to look at, at the, ish, the definition of substantially surrounded. Uh, earlier today, I sent out an email to those who were on that committee uh, to try to come up with some dates um, to, to meet, to talk about substantially surrounded. I have not put an agenda together yet, so when, when I do, I can put that on the agenda. So if you are on that committee and you got an email from me today, respond back, please, and let me know what dates work for you. Um, I, I, when I signed checks here the other day with Mr. Knox, I told him my opinion on what I was gonna do. So it wasn't, he had nothing to do with this. I don't want to, it's uh, strictly me. <laughs> so it's a good idea. I guess it's on me. And he said that there's two uh, LAFCOs that don't rotate. Uh, there and could, one of them had a chair there for 20 years or something? I, I know of two that, ha that had the same chair for close to 20 years. Uh, there may be more. That's just what I have in my head at the moment. Okay. Okay, uh, on to uh, no further discussion on that. Under, on to general business. Approval of the claim list number 19-06. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, please cast your ballots. Who was second? Or your vote. Can, can you confirm who was second? Second. Karen. Karen Sanders. Motion approved. All ayes. Okay, we're on to uh, 8B, approval of the lease agreement. Mr. Knox? Yeah, before the commission today is a five-year lease agreement for office space at LAFCO's current location. The commission was previously made aware that there have been issues with both the property and the office space that were not being addressed by property management. The owners since that time have replaced property management and items have been addressed, including transient sleeping on site. Uh, there's now fencing and security gates that are only open to the public during business hours. After hours require a code to get into the, to, to the property. Uh, management has also uh, addressed the major bug problem we've been having, where we'd have to go on bug patrol every morning in our office to clean them up before we got our work started. Um, so just those, those simple things uh, make a big difference in, in our everyday uh, use of the office. Uh, Inside our office, there's been no upgrades uh, for decades, and it's showing its age, and, and not in a good way. Um, ownership has agreed to do over $20,000 in upgrades within our suite. This includes new paint, carpet, cabinets, door hardware, remover, removal of an interior window, placing a sound wall between our office and the chiropractor's office next door. But Bud can hear every one of their conversations, and I'm sure they can hear every one of Bud's. Uh, it's just not necessary uh, or a good way of doing business. The upgrades will be completed the week in October that staff and a few commissioners will be at the CalAFCO conference. This will mean that we will have a very little downtime in the office. Uh, we will have to move everything out of the office for, a couple, for that week so they can do the repairs, then we'll move everything right back in. So that'll take that'll take a little money and time. Uh, the agreement I have with property management is if one of the suites is continuing to be vacant, we can just move everything into that suite for the week and then move it back out. Uh, otherwise, we're going to have to rent a truck and store it for a week. Uh, the lease rates are the lowest in the area for, bill, for buildings that currently have office space available, and I've looked at a bunch of them. We currently pay a buck 55 per square foot. The new contract starts at $1.50 with a 3% increase each year, which is approximately five cents per square foot per year. Uh, so the last year will be a buck 70. Uh, this is a similar rate structure as we've had in the previous two contracts. I'm also gonna allocate some of our budget to upgrade our space with some additional cabinets. Um, and Mr. Rice has agreed to build us a conference table. He, he agreed on that two years ago and I haven't seen it yet. But now that we're making these upgrades, I'm, I'm more optimistic that he'll get onto that project. Um, so it is my recommendation that we approve the lease agreement for 5300 Linux Avenue for the next five years. 
Any public comment to that? Any commissioner comments? Just, I'd like to say well done to staff. Um, sounds like you've negotiated a good uh, agreement for us. And it's, uh, you know, it's once the, maybe the, uh, the uh, possibility of us, of us moving on uh, may occur, it gives us a little bit uh, of negotiating space. So good for you. Thank, thank you. Um, motion, motion to approve. Second. Uh, motion by Scrivener, second by Couch. Um, uh, yeah. Please cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, we're on to HC, AB 1822, Cal Lafco ominous bill support letter, Mr. Knox. Uh, Included in your pack is a letter to, in support of, a, of AB 1822. This is the yearly omnibus bill sponsored by Cal Lafco regarding non substantive changes to Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act. Some of the uh, changes include a new definition of the term service. Modifications of language in reference to protest hearings where there is a conflict between sections of the government code. Existing law requiring that commissions to order a change of organization or reorganization subject to confirmation of the votes if the change of organization or, or, or reorganization consists of incorporation or disincorporate as specified. That's one way of saying if, you're, if you have to do a protest hearing uh, um, if you're uh, reorganizing. Uh, but now you can do it if you want to consolidate two or more cities. That may actually happen here at some point. So that's something that, uh, while not immediately in our purview, could happen. Uh, so that's informational for you only. I did provide a copy to the chair as per the, our agreement. If there's a bill we're supporting or opposing that does, is not controversial, that I go ahead and write the letter and then pro provide it to the commission afterwards. So this has already been provided to the governor's office. Uh, actually, it's through both, both sides of the legislature and it's waiting governor's signature. No further comment on that. We're now to um, 8D, uh, uh, executive office for miscellaneous items. Mr. Knox. Yeah, the end of this month is the end of our fiscal year. Uh, we will again come in under budget. Uh, and we did that even though we paid our CalPERS unfunded liability uh, lump sum uh, right here before the end. And hopefully they're gonna cash the check here soon. Um, so we're working on that. We've scheduled dates with Brown Armstrong to perform the in-house portion of our audit for 2018, 2019, 2018 and 2019. Uh, so that's coming up in the fall. I also mentioned the policy committee. Uh, we're gonna be meeting here shortly. Uh, a couple of meetings ago, we dissolved the Rosedale Rio Bravo Resource Conservation District and then annexed a lot of that property into Northwest Kern Resource Conservation District. At the time, I told you we were working with the uh, State Department of Conservation and they had some grant money available for us. At the time, they told me it was gonna be about $15,000 uh, I sent them an invoice for a little over $20,000 and they sent me a check for a little over $20,000. So we got reimbursed for that, uh, which is good to have that little extra dollars in our account. So we may have another one uh, very similar to this coming up. So uh, I reached out to them to see if they wanna do it again for us. Uh, so that's, that's good news. Um, at last meeting I mentioned the Calafco conference is in October and is in Sacramento in October, end of October, the first of November. Still don't have um, the information required to get hotel rooms and, and to register to be there, but uh, keep it on your calendar. Lastly, I wanna mention that we are dark in July, uh, so we won't be back until Wednesday, August 28th, five o'clock here at the Board of Supervisors Chambers. Okay, uh, we're on to closed sessions. There is none. We are adjourned.